Hi, I'm Cece Bouchardi. And I'm Tatiana Alvarez, and this is Social Gist. Locally, New Yorkers took part in the International March for Our Lives, protesting gun violence. According to Deadline News, New York was one of the 800 cities worldwide to participate. The main event took place in Washington, D.C., where it was televised by multiple TV news. National news, many American colleges are eliminating humanities as a major because of low enrollment in the arts. However, many students think differently and are protesting. Could this mean the end of majors such as history, philosophy, and languages? Government officials are discussing plans for the upcoming meeting between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. The two leaders will sit down together with South Korean Unification Minister Cho Young-gun. They are also sitting down with North Korean Head of Affairs Ri sang gwan Trump told reporters of The Hill he is confident that a positive diplomatic outcome will come from this meeting. Back to our main story for today. According to Fox News, the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, is planning on stripping away humanity majors in order to expand programs that have clear career pathways, as the Washington Post states. The students of the University of Wisconsin are protesting the elimination of these majors. The University of Wisconsin is not the only college playing to drop humanity majors. SUNY Albany and the University of Minnesota are too. Many colleges are seeing fewer students enrolling in majors such as language, philosophy, history, and literature. When college funding receives cutbacks, the liberal arts are the first to go. Lack of enrollment and reduced tuition revenue is part of the issue. According to the college's representative, it is because they want to add 16 programs that demonstrated value and demand in the region. A few of the majors that will be expanded and added onto are marketing, management, graphic design, computer systems, and aquaculture. In other words, majors that will get you a job as soon as you graduate. According to Forbes, as of 2014, the National Association for Colleges and Employers computer science majors have almost a 70% rate of getting at least one job offer before they graduate in their last year of college. Following up, right behind that is economics majors, accounting, engineering, and business. And you know, only 37% of liberal arts and humanities major have a chance of obtaining a job after graduation. However, having a humanity major is important to the students of the university. As they staged a 13-minute sit-in, one minute for each major proposed for the cutting. Of, for cutting. Student Olivia DeVock says, We would like the administration to reconsider the ways that they are doing these budget cuts and to hopefully preserve a few of these humanity majors. The professors of the school are also coming out to support the students. Political science professor Jennifer Collins states taking these humanity, humanity majors would radically change the nature of the university and lessen the opportunities available to students in central Wisconsin. Nothing is final yet. The administration will continue to hear out students and faculty to come to a compromise on what to do. After seeing the turnout of alumni, students, and faculty members there to support the liberal arts, Chancellor Bernie Patterson states, if you're interested in what the product of liberal arts education is, look here. We know it when we see it, we value it when we see it, and that we pledge to continue. The effort of the protesters is being acknowledged and appreciated. Could you imagine if NYT wanted to cut our major? What about the other students of NYT whose majors are English, interdisciplinary studies, or political science? Just for budget cuts and being we aren't guaranteed a job, no one is really ever guaranteed a job until they go out there and try. Colleges serve as a way to help students network and connect. Here at NYIT, we do not have a humanities major, yet we do have several liberal arts majors, such as interdisciplinary studies, for one. We interviewed a student in the major to see how he feels about this situation and what would happen if NYT were to ever consider removing that program. I'm here with Dominic Joseph. He is an interdisciplinary major student here at NYT. Hey Dom, how are you? Doing good, how are you? I'm good. So what is interdisciplinary studies? All right, interdisciplinary study is basically a liberal arts style degree plan and it makes you study more than one major so you can be more well-rounded in that degree or in your field. So what are your concentrations? Mine's is business management, communications, and social science. And what do you plan on doing with, like, after you leave school? After I leave school, I plan on working in PR and advertising, and then my long-term goal is to be a sports agent. 
and with that degree or with my concentrations, I will be able to know the law side, the business side, and communi communication side so I can manage the right players. Do you have any jobs lined up for after you leave NYT? I have a couple options, and one of the options is Global Skyline Enterprise. It's a marketing firm in the city. So have you heard what's happening in the University of Wisconsin with them planning on cutting the humanities majors over there? Yeah, I actually did, and I feel like if they do that, it's, it's wrong because the people that's cutting the program are not in our field, and they don't understand or know the skills you need to be successful in that line of work. If NYIT were to plan on cutting the interdisciplinary studies, which is kind of similar to the humanity studies, how would you feel? And yeah, how would you feel about that? I'll be de devastated. Would you protest? Of course, I would definitely protest. But it would be hard to bring other people along with me that's in my field because our interdisciplinary study community is so small here. How could NYIT better expand? our interdisciplinary major? They need to advertise it more, the same way they advertise like architect and engineering. They need to do the same thing with interdisciplinary studies. Well, thank you for your time. Wow, Tati, that was really insightful. Yeah, so what'd you think about it? Honestly, I think Dom is right. People who aren't in the humanity major or do liberal arts don't understand what it's like for these kids who instead of just focusing on one concentration get to become well-rounded. Yeah, I feel like the problem with colleges, or some colleges anyway, they want to push kids more towards the math and the sciences. There are some people that are not good at math and or science, and they feel a better outlet for them is art, being creative. And without that type of creativity, we wouldn't have movies, we wouldn't have paintings, we wouldn't have music. Like, come on now. I see it. You're absolutely right. And you know what? I think they're mostly pushing kids to the math and sciences because they want them to be able to have like a clear cut job. But what it is that if you have all these people wanting to do engineering and then you all have to compete for it, it's not you guys are going to have people who are unemployed. They need a creative pathway for themselves. Exactly. And in that sense, we have certain teachers who have liberal arts degrees. They want to teach students. They want to teach children even. Like um, a teacher who probably went to school for engineering doesn't want to teach a second grader how to read, you know. They went to school in order to make more money when they get out of school, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And what about the people who don't know how to do any of that? What if they're not good at it? What are they supposed to do? Are we supposed to just leave them unemployed? What happens to them? We have to really let people express their creativeness through wanting to do these humanity majors and through these liberal art majors, like music and literature and history. All that stuff, it really comes together and makes, really what makes the world go around, especially in education. Yeah, it's freedom of expression, and we're choosing to express ourselves. But you know, taking away these majors, take away that creative aspect. You're absolutely right. Well, thank you for joining us on this week's Social Gist, and join us on YouTube at 7 o'clock tonight and on Globesville.com. Now for our weekly slant. Stories from different news sources and show the slant that each side presents. After pointing out the differences between the sources, we will then show the similarities between the two, along with an outside source that is less likely to be affected by political bias. And I only ask because with all the things going on, Russia and Stormy Daniels, usually he likes to communicate directly with the American people. He has chosen not to. Is that part of a new strategy that the White House is employing? Or is it just the president taking a break? Uh, look, the president's still been incredibly engaged. Uh, he gives us messages to come out and deliver on his behalf on uh, the regular basis, but he's also put out uh, a number of tweets over the last week, uh, and I think you can expect that he'll continue to do that. First, we'll look at Fox News's take of the story. The news of the night is there is no White House. Have you realized that yet? There is no White House. Not since Donald Trump took the oath of office. There is no White House in the traditional journalistic sense that allowed journalists and headline writers to use <laughs> phrases like, the White House confirmed today that X, or the White House denied today that Y. For that White House to exist, the White House that speaks 
for the president, that White House has to know what the president actually thinks or what the president is actually going to do or what the president actually did or what the president actually said. And there's only one person in the Trump White House who knows those things, and that is Donald Trump. As I told Rachel, the wall behind us here is a partial Partial list of the names the president of the United States has found the time to punch back at, as Sarah Sanders would put it. Stormy Daniels' name is not there. Michael Avenatti's name is not there. The president certainly has the time to tweet attacks against both of them, but he now knows that if he publicly calls Stormy Daniels a liar, Michael Avenatti has a defamation lawsuit ready to go against the president of the United States, and Michael Avenatti will have yet another legal avenue for getting the president of the United States under oath in a legal deposition about what he really did with Stormy Daniels. MSNBC discusses the plans of Stormy Daniels' legal team and the potential risk of a defamation lawsuit against Trump if he responds. They also show a clip of the White House press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who explains why the president has responded to Daniel's story. MSNBC also makes a point on the president's history of responding to people who criticize him and claim that the White House administration is not actually communicating with the president. Now let's take a look at the Fox News side of the story. Well, they've also just slapped a defamation suit against Michael Cohen. Okay, so uh, obviously continue to have developments in this case where an affair that is alleged to have occurred um, quite some years ago. One of the things, Greg, that people are seizing upon was that there was an alleged threat made, intimidation to...